Yeah, uh, is the screen visible for everyone? You can see it. Can you hear me? Hello. <clears throat> Am I muted? Let me see. Oh, okay. So I, there was, I forgot to check the chat. I insist. Uh, sorry. I was wondering why. This is fine. Okay. All right, so uh, last time we were discussing magnetic fields and uh, different, for, uh, different types of uh, field lines, uh, the different types of shapes that can be formed for different uh, magnets. Well, really we discussed a bar magnet and a current carrying conductor, right? And we defined a right-hand grip rule, which basically tells you uh, the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the current. Uh, if you just curl your fingers around the wire, uh, if the current is going in the upwards direction, then you can point your thumb in the upwards direction and the curl of the direction of the curl of fingers will give you uh, the direction of the magnetic field, right? And uh, the next thing that we were uh, going to talk about is uh, the magnetic field uh, of a current carrying a solenoid, right? So if there was, it is, it, attached to a battery, it will be uh, a solenoid is something that looks, uh, uh, it looks like this, these uh, round wire basically. And so when we have uh, a solenoid, uh, the magnetic field lines for a solenoid are, they look something uh, like this. Actually, I think I should use a different color. So that makes things a bit clear. Right. And then similarly, we would have another one at the bottom. Right, now there is a right hand grip rule for uh, solenoids as well. Uh, which can tell you the direction of the current and uh, the, di the direction of the North Pole, basically, because once you know the direction of the North Pole, then it's then you know that the magnetic field lines, they come out of the North Pole and they enter uh, into the South Pole, right? So suppose that if I have this thing uh, and the direction of the current is as shown with that uh, arrows on this curl wired, uh, it's like this then if you apply a right hand grip rule to this let me write it down uh, let me use a better one. yeah so uh, this is for solenoid. So it's sometimes called solenoid, sometimes it's also called a uh, coil, right? A, a coil of wire, wire. So the thumb in this case would be telling you the direction of the North Pole. And the curl of fingers is telling you the direction of the current. So for example, if you look, if, if you can apply that over here, and you'll see that your the fingers, they curl in, so the current is in this direction, right? It's like in this direction, if you look at the solenoid. Now, if you curl your right hand uh, in the fingers of your right hand in this direction, the thumb points to the right, right? Which means that this part of the solenoid behaves as the North Pole. And if that part behaves as the North Pole, then the opposite end will obviously be behaving as this South Pole. 
And that's why you can see that the field lines are coming from uh, the North Pole and they're entering into the South Pole. So does that make sense? Is that clear? These, uh, you have more space at the bottom. Okay, so in this case, uh, for a solenoid, the field is very strong inside the solenoid, right? That's where the magnetic field is the strongest. So magnetic field is strongest inside the solenoid. Because that's where the most uh, influence is uh, for the uh, current. And the if you also notice uh, this field line, it looks familiar to what it looked for a bar magnet, if you come back to this thing, uh, which is a bar magnet. Now, solenoids, they're mostly used to make something that is called electromagnets, right? Where you can use uh, this solenoid and bound it around some uh, metal, basically, we usually uh, use iron. And that uh, the reason we use iron is that it increases the strength of the magnetic field uh, inside the solenoid. Uh, so to in, uh, because it's a good conductor and also it will increase the, the strength of the magnetic field around uh, the solenoid as well, right? So one more thing before we move on to uh, electromagnetism is to understand uh, the directions of current as inwards and outwards, right? So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, suppose that if I want to say that the current is going inside uh, uh, something, right? So for example, uh, how do we represent that on a piece of paper? You can say that if I have, uh, you can assign that if I have a dot, right? I'll, call, I'll write it as D-O-T, dot, right? A dot, you can remember that the current or a dot means that it is coming outwards. If you think of dot as directly outwards, right? It's just a way to remember uh, that the uh, that the current is basically for a dot. It is represented as the current coming out of the paper or uh, the sheet. Now, when the current is coming out of the sheet, you can use your right hand grip rule where the thumb will point in the direction of the current, right? And the curl of your fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field. So if you apply that right hand rule over here, your thumb will be pointing outside the paper and the curl of fingers will be in this direction, which means that the field lines will be drawn uh, something like this. Can you tell me why uh, is the gap being increased for these field lines? Why do I draw it as an increasing gap? Um, the magnetic field strength decreases. Yeah, the magnetic the strength of the magnetic field uh, decreases as we move away uh, from this conductor, right? And uh, okay, so. This is uh, for a, a current that is coming directly outwards, right? So outward current. 
And then you have uh, another one, which is obviously the opposite of this, which is uh, the current that is going inside uh, the sheet or the paper. And we usually represent it with X, right? So X implies that the current is, uh, the current is coming or going into the paper. And again, uh, the field lines will be represented something like that. Okay. And you apply, you can apply the right hand grip rule. And now the thumb points in the direction uh, of the current, which is inside the paper. So the thumb will be pointing in the screen and the, uh, the thing, your fingers will be curling uh, to the right, right? In the clockwise direction. So the, the lines will look something like this. and it's represented with a cross. Okay, so as we have discussed for uh, charges, right? Uh, like and unlike charges. So like uh, for charges, we had this thing that when you have same types of charges, they will repel each other. Uh, and in the same way, we also saw for magnetism, if you have, in, 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 instead of charges, we talk about poles, north and south pole. And if you have same poles, they will repel each other. And if you have opposite poles, they'll attract each other due to the direction uh, of the magnetic fields coming uh, out of the north pole and into the south pole, which is why they attract each other. The force is attractive for uh, opposite poles. Uh, in the same way, we can discuss uh, if, if I have a current carrying conductor or multiple current carrying conductors, how will they behave dynamically? As in what forces would they experience, right? So for a current, carrying conductor, you could, or let me write it as forces experienced, right? Now, suppose if I have, uh, this is a wire, right? And the current direction of the current is over here. And I bring another wire close to this thing. But before I do that, uh, it is obvious now that if this wire is carrying current, charges are moving and that would have been producing a magnetic field, right, around this. Current uh, wire, and you can know the direction by curling your fingers, and the direction would be in this way. Right? So, this would be the direction of the magnetic field for this wire. If I bring another wire closer to this wire, and its direction is also in this way. What would happen is that these two uh, wires will experience a force. Uh, in fact, if you bring this new wire that I just uh, do right now, this wire is going to experience a force if it becomes in the magnetic field that was generated by the first wire, right? And the nature of that force will be attractive. So like currents attract each other. And why is it attractive? If I draw uh, the, the loop basically for this thing, suppose that if I have, uh, I'll use the cross notation, right? So if, suppose if there are two uh, crosses, so this means that the direction of the currents are same for both of them cross meant into the page side, right? So the direction of the current is going into the page for both of the wires. Now, if I draw the magnetic field lines around these uh, wires like this, so you can think of this as a top view of the wire. And we know that uh, using the right hand rule, this will give me something, uh, the direction of magnetic field lines would look something like this.
right? Now, if that is the case, this is just a visual representation of a magnetic field line representation of the diagram that we have at left, right? Where we have two wires. And you can immediately see that because if this line, if this uh, arrow, you look at this arrow, uh, I think you can see my pointer as well. So if you look at this arrow and the opposite on, on the next diagram, there is uh, the arrow points in that direction. So these arrows are like going in this way, right? So you can draw an overall magnetic field around both of these conductors as, let me try to draw it, if I can do it. I can do a good job. If it looks something like this, where the lines are in this direction, so they're coming there, there, and there, and there. So in exactly the same way, if you remember from uh, charges, we had positive and negative charges, right? And for positive, the field lines were out and they were inside a negative charge. And that's where we got uh, our understanding for why two different types of charges will attract each other because the field line coming out of the positive charge is going into the negative charge. So they'll come closer together. And exactly the same way, the magnetic field lines that are coming into, uh, sorry, out of this, or they're going in this direction and they're entering uh, in this loop. That's why uh, these, uh, what do you call this thing? Uh, the uh, two current carrying uh, conductors, if they are uh, in the same direction, that's uh, what we call like currents. They are going to attract each other, right? So this gives me the conclusion that like currents will attract each other. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So the, the force that would be experienced by these two wires would be in this direction. So they would come closer together. Now, if I reverse, one direction or the direction of one of these currents, suppose that this is how it looks like. So the, the current is in opposite directions. Uh, it makes sense just to say that uh, now these two currents will repel each other, but the reasoning is exactly the same as uh, the one that we described. Uh, now the two uh, wires will be one, it can be represented with a cross, and the other can be represented with a dot. So that means that they, these two directions are opposite to each other. Uh, you have to ignore my circles. They're not perfect, but anyway. Right, so you'll, you can now quick easily draw the magnetic field lines uh, for these two uh, diagrams right, using the right-hand rule. So if, for, if you have a cross, that, that means that it's directly into the paper. That means using the right-hand grip rule, the magnetic field lines should be moving clockwise direction. Right, and for a dot, which is directly outwards, the magnetic field lines move anti-clockwise. So this would look something like this. Now you can see, in this case, this arrow points in this direction, while this one is pointing in the opposite direction, which means that the field lines that would be generated around these two uh, conductors will look something like this. Uh, let me try it again. Yeah, it And over here, it would just be a straight line. Right, so, and the direction for that would be using the direction of these arrows, it would be this. Which means, which is clearly telling you that at the center, you have an asymptote where 
where the uh, that is uh, as I'm told is basic. It is basically that region where uh, these two wires will never come together because uh, there is some repulsive force force due to these and uh, uh, nature of these magnetic field lines that you can see that are going uh, in this direction, which means that uh, the force that would be experienced by these two wires would be opposite to each other in this way. So the they would experience repulsion, right? And that gives us a conclusion that unlike currents repel. Is that clear? Yes. So now let's talk about uh, a current forces uh, on a current carrying conductor. And we'll also derive, uh, we'll give our, an expression to calculate this force. Uh, we'll see that it depends on the current and the length of the uh, conductor. And uh, this is obviously uh, in uh, a magnetic field. Right, so what do I mean by that is suppose that if I have two magnets, right? And let me draw these two magnets. So this is, let's just get rid of that line. And let's separate them apart. So these are the end of two magnets. Suppose this is the north end of the first magnet, and this is the south end of the second magnet. We know that the direction of the magnetic field with, would look something like this, coming out from the north and entering into the south, right? So for the, uh, for the current, we'll observe that it, it, uh, the, both the current and the field are perpendicular to each other, right? And then the force is perpendicular to that as well, right? So all these uh, quantities, the force experience, the magnetic field and the current are all mutually perpendicular to each other, which makes a set of a three-dimensional axes that looks something like this, right? In this case, also these all these axes are perpendicular to each other. So you observe that uh, the current, if the magnetic field is like this, and suppose the current should be perpendicular to this magnetic field, so it should look something like this. So if I say that this is magnetic field, we'll represent magnetic field with B from now on, and the direction of current is this way then this tells you that the direction of force should be perpendicular. Now it could be either upwards or downwards, but it turns out if the current is uh, pointing in, uh, into the page, the force is downwards. And that is consistent with this three-dimensional axis, right? So for this case, this looks something like this. So this is my current, this is my magnetic field, and this is my force. This is what uh, we would uh, observe in the lab. Now, basically, the magnetic field lines of our conductor uh, are interacting, right, uh, with the perm uh, with uh, this uh, uh, these two magnets that we have north and south. 
and we, due to that interaction, there would be some force that would be experienced uh, on the uh, whatever wire if I place. So obviously, uh, it should be clear that this current that I drew in this direction, it is any current carrying a wire or any conductor, right? So that through that, the current is flowing in that way. So if I bring it inside this uh, in the magnetic field of uh, these two magnets, uh, the wire would fall downwards or it would move downwards because it would experience a downwards magnetic force, right? And of course, that's not the only force that would be there. Uh, can you tell me what would be the another force? In this example, it's very, it comes from basic uh, Newtonian mechanics. Newton's laws. It would be, the force would also be experienced by the magnet, right? Equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, right? So if the wire inside the magnet is experiencing a force downwards and uh, the magnets, the wire is experiencing that force because of the magnets. So the magnets should also experience some force because of the wire and that would be in the opposite direction, which is upwards. So there would be forces experienced by these magnets upwards, which would be same in magnitude, but opposite in direction of the downward force. And this axis, this three-dimensional axis give us a rule, right-hand rule to determine the direction of force, magnetic field and current. And it's called Fleming's uh, rule, uh, uh, sorry, left-hand, Fleming's left-hand rule, right? And you can use this uh, to determine the direction of force, current, and magnetic field. Uh, the thumb, in this case, points in the direction of the force. Uh, again, this is coming from this axis that we just discussed, right? Then you have uh, the first finger, which points in the direction of magnetic field, which I'll write it with B, and the second finger points in the direction of the current. Is that clear? Any, uh, any questions from this thing? Do you understand why, uh, from where do we get this Fleming's left hand rule and uh, why would there be multiple forces experienced uh, by the wire and the magnet as well? What is B? B is magnetic field, right? Uh, I, uh, so we'll be using uh, the letter B to represent magnetic field. All right, so actually we have less than one minute left. Uh, so in the next uh, class, we'll derive the expression for the force that is experienced experienced by uh, the wire in terms of uh, the magnetic field, the strength of that magnetic field, the current uh, that flows through that wire and the length of the wire as well. We'll see that it depends on all of these uh, properties, uh, the geometry of the wire and the magnetic field uh, in which the wire is put into. Right, so uh, you have class tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we'll be having a class tomorrow as well.